Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Day. Sorry for the AIDS YouTube title and thumbnail, but I thought it was really funny. Uh, so I just kind of went with it. And I wanted to uh, respond to some of these, you know, reactions that I'm getting and how people are trying to spin this narrative a little bit uh, because I think it's really messed up. And so I wanted to respond to that. And that's what this video is going to be about. So there's this guy on Reddit and all of it's upvoted too. So obviously this is what Reddit believes at least. And it's all just about me, right? Every single thing he posts on Reddit is about me. So this guy's dedicated a large sum of his time into doing this. And I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the insane community reaction. Like Richard Lewis said, I actually didn't watch his uh, YouTube video yet. I'll probably do it after this. Um, I don't really like watching stuff about myself. I'll be honest. Um, I, I don't really watch videos like that usually, um, but I'll probably check it out because I'm curious what Richard Lewis has to say, because obviously he's a smart, intelligent guy and uh, probably has some insight. So, but anyways, um, you know, throughout the whole process from getting unbanned, I told my fans and, you know, sounds weird to me saying fans, but, you know, I told the people um, that I would, you know, talk about what I'm going through, how I'm feeling throughout the whole process, right? So basically, I mean, what he's posted out is just the process of how I was feeling at the time. So when we got unbanned, I was feeling like, okay, let's do this, man. You know, let's get dedicated. Let's start screaming. Let's start putting in the time and the effort. And I was pretty, you know, gung-ho about it. Um, obviously, that motivation, as you guys saw, really faded um, because, you know, I haven't played competitive Counter-Strike in the past three years. And... I haven't really played any serious Counter-Strike in the past three years. And you kind of romanticize it a little bit from three years ago when I was actually playing and competing and going to tournaments and whatnot. But, you know, straight up, honestly, I mean, it's shitty how it happened. But getting banned was actually one of the best things that kind of happened to my life because I got a much more, you know, balanced life before it was all just Counter-Strike. And, you know, then I started going out, you know, girlfriends, you know, living like a normal um, well-adjusted life since I got banned because really I had to, right? And I had to focus on other areas of my life, um, you know, financially, um, knowing what I wanted to do, uh, you know, and just living like a normal social person's life, right? Like not just sitting there playing a video game, doing 110% of all your time and effort into one video game, right? That's that's really not healthy, let's be real. And I was kind of sucked into that. So it actually ended up being overall a very good thing. Obviously it would have been better if I didn't get banned and I actually did that on my own, but that's not what happened, right? Um, so I kind of look at it in that way. But anyways, let's go on and I want to respond to some of these things. So in this vlog on 724, what is that? What, what comes before August? I can't remember. But anyways, it says within six to eight months, we should be competing like a top five team in the world. And I said in this vlog, I said, um, these are all Twitter questions that people were asking me. And they were asking me, you know, someone said, what are my expectations? And, you know, I, I'll rephrase what I said in the vlog. I said, if we pick up equivalent talents to me, Brax and AZK, right? So what would equivalent talents in my eyes be? They'd be like other top 10 NA players because after six to eight months, I'd, I'd figure we would be top 10 players um, that we would be competing like a top five team in the world. And that's my expectations. I wouldn't play Counter-Strike if I didn't have those expectations. I wouldn't. If I'm going to play Counter-Strike, I'm going to have the drive and motivation to get to that level. That's what I believe in myself. That's what I believe my level could be at if I put in that time and effort. And you could call me crazy. Um, you could call me retarded, whatever. But pretty much any person that's competitive in their nature and has confidence in themselves is going to say the same thing. If you guys watch any sports and you watch baseball, basketball, football, even players on the Cleveland Browns who fucking are like 1 in 55 in the past three years are all saying, hey, yet I literally just like, autism mode there um but anyways they're all saying in interviews before the season starts they're saying hey you know we're gonna compete we're gonna make the playoffs and we're gonna see where this thing takes us that's fully what i expect from this team it's pretty much what everybody says um almost always unless maybe you're like the philadelphia 76ers and you're like blatantly tanking right for like three straight years then they're just like we're focused on development right but that's that's how I am. That's how pretty much everybody in any competitive field is. If you're, you know, 
a basketball team, right? And you're in the NBA and you're on the, you're John Wall. What is he saying? He's going to be like, I expect to compete for a championship. You know, if you're anybody on the Wizards, that's what you're saying. Even though realistically, we know the Wizards aren't going to win the championship, right? We know they're, I mean, I guess they could be a top five team. Um, so I set my sets uh, on that. And, and I maintain that if I wanted to play Counter-Strike and I was putting six to eight hours a day in and I was really had that competitive motivation and drive, that's what I would expect to be at. And I still, you know, would expect to be that. Um, this is absolutely true. We did have three offers from professional orgs to replace their offers or rosters. Um, they went through roster, you know, there's autism mode again. Sorry about that. I hope that's not making a bunch of noise on the mic. Um, but anyways, um, I'll name them uh, because they had, I'm going to name two of them. I'm not going to name the third because that would be like the biggest Reddit thread if I did name the third. Um, but the two orgs were because Optic was dying at the time. We knew that. Okay. So we knew those players were going to go to different teams. Um, but that has nothing to do with it. But anyway, so the two orgs were Misfits, who ended up replacing two of their players for Debo Duvek and um, Almanac, right? And they came to us with a competitive salary to everybody else, which was about 10000 a month, anywhere around there. Right. I would say eight to twelve thousand a month is a comparable salary that people are getting in those orgs right now. Uh, the other org was NRG, which we saw made changes with um, Cirque and someone else. And they basically told, you know, us and me and Brax, they were like, hey, you know, we had a meeting with them and they were like, you know, we're going to make some changes with our team. If you guys want to join up, you can keep whoever you want. Right. And this is this is what really frustrates me about this whole situation is because I was up front with everybody. And if I wanted to have a quick cash grab, as Steele said in this clip where I just want a quick cash grab, why wouldn't I have taken these offers where I could have been getting paid ten thousand dollars a month? That's what really frustrated me about this whole clip is that never, someone's completely talking out of his ass and i'll watch it he real quick if you guys haven't seen it and just like fucking rate through mdl thinking it was a walk in the park he got brax and kev because no one else would want to fucking play with them and they were banned too see that's kind of annoying too because he has no idea what he's talking about um we actually scrimmed with rush and Alish, two top five players in na and i asked both of them straight up you know where would we be on your list right and Rush was like, okay, first I would pick, you know, Liquid or Cloud9, so them two. But if they didn't want to play with me, then I would, you know, I'd be down to play with you guys. And you could ask Rush yourself for that. You know, Optic was dying at the time. And, you know, I kind of wanted to know where we would be at in other players' eyes. And that's where we were at at the time. Now, whether that's changed from then and now, sure. But, you know, that's where we were at. And at the time, Liquid was going through some, you know, I don't want to say like a falling out, but they were thinking about, you know, Elise and their future with him. Kitty, down. And I told Elise straight up and I told Rush straight up. I told both of them. I'm like, okay, good. I mean, if you get an offer from Cloud9 or Liquid Rush, you need to take it. Right. And I told Elise that after he was scrimming with us, we actually scrimmed with Elise probably like seven, eight scrims. It was, it was a lot. Um, and I told him straight up, I'm like, you should do everything in your power to stay on Liquid. Like, just make it work. And I'm sure if you asked him that, he would tell you the same thing. And I told him that. I'm like, if Liquid wants to keep you, you should, you know, try to make it work with them. Like, that's by far your best option, you know. And at that time, I think they were going through some, like, drama or whatever. I won't really comment more on it. Um, but look what ended up happening. Cloud9 is doing great. They have one of the most talented – I think they have the most talented roster in NA. And Liquid's doing insane since Nitro actually started calling, who I would have never pegged a distract caller, by the way. But, um, hey, Nick surprises you, man. Um, so, yeah, Liquid's doing incredibly well as well. So everything worked out for the best for those two players, 100%. Um, so yeah, so I mean, to say that they didn't want to play with us is kind of ridiculous because if I went through all the player PMs and whatnot that we had on the team at, at the time, it's just, he's completely talking out of his ass. And it's, it's just like, usually I don't comment on things. I usually don't even click on things on Reddit that's about me and stuff like that, um, especially where people are talking about me because it kind of makes me uncomfortable whatever um but yeah i have to respond to this because it's so annoying other fucking players that he had on his exclusive list would play with him like the breeze and like Ethan. i was already said why that's wrong um and we could have played like with that, them or like wardell or something or like any of the tier one players on liquid and c9 
He thought they would just go undefeated in an MDL with minimal work, and then once he realized that he'd have to put in work and that he'd have to travel again, he's like, "Fuck this! I'm not. It's not worth it." He thought he could just get a nice cash grab by like getting investors or or making pro league, and then. So as far as the investor thing, we actually had very serious investors from multiple different organizations. I will tell you that one offer was for eight to twelve thousand salary a month. Um, also getting equity in the organization and then having the organization uh, or, you know, the investor backers would put over $1.5 million a year for two years guaranteed in order to fund the org and our salaries and our travel. And then also pick up other teams and build an actual organization. And I turned that down because I, I didn't know if I was going to be feeling it or not. So I wanted to go this route where I would just play like Premier. I figured me and Bra me and Kev would still need to prove ourselves. Brax has already proved himself. He's already still top two player in NA. And so I literally did the exact opposite of the cash grab. I didn't take $10,000 a month from an existing org. I didn't take player spots that were more deserving of myself on existing pro league spots. And I didn't take money from investors, huge amounts of monies to have salary myself and equity in an organization. I didn't do any of that because I wasn't comfortable doing it because I didn't feel like, you know, I felt like I had to prove myself and I didn't know how I would feel about playing. And I documented this in the vlogs that I made. So to say like I did a cash grab is, is just, it's so ridiculous. Oh, I forgot to add. He also said I signed Brax to contracts. And I assume he's referring to these tweets where I said I signed them and now I'm selling them for three Taco Bell meals each, AZK for a BMW M5 and Swag for a 250K buyout. DM me people. And this happened because I'm just joking around. And while we were, you know, in Mumble together, I was like, hey, Brax, bro, you know, like all these orgs are going to want you, right? What if we just say, I signed you to a contract and then your buyout's like 200K, then we split that shit. And we were just like laughing about it because obviously we're not doing that. None of them are signed to me. I went on on Twitch afterwards, well, like right after I tweeted that, and I said, oh yeah, Dapper and Poyo, they have to give me 80% of their future earnings. Like I'm just completely joking, just fucking around. I don't know how anybody could take this seriously. It's clearly a joke. I talked about it on Twitch being a joke. I'm just fucking around. I don't, if you actually took this seriously, I'm sorry. I did not mean for this to be taken in any serious manner or context at all. Um, like saying, I'm like, why would anybody sign the rights to me personally? It just doesn't make any sense. I didn't think people would think that it made sense and would ever take that seriously. So if Steele took that seriously, I don't know why he would. Sorry, this is the alt page on Reddit. Whoops. But anyways, uh yeah that obviously wasn't serious i didn't sign anybody to any contracts i don't know how anybody could say i wanted a quick cash grab when i did everything to not get a quick cash grab i could have fucking taken money from these investors i could have taken a pro league spot undeservedly and it would have been fucked up and i tried to do and i didn't do it i didn't do it i literally did everything to not be shady and to do something undeserving and i still get people trying to spin the narrative somehow that i was doing something undeserving it's fucking crazy um but anyways yeah so i talked about this yeah there's three professional orgs i won't name the third one because it would just be a huge shit show and um i don't want to do it to that org and i didn't even want to do it to these two other orgs but it feels like, I don't know. I feel like I have to explain myself. Um, those other two orgs, Misfits and NRG, they ended up making changes to the rosters. So I feel like it's fine to kind of talk about it a little bit now, right? Um, but anyways, I think me and AZK will absolutely be top 10 NA players without a doubt. I still think that. I said that in six to eight months in time. What the fuck? Oh, there's an Amber Alert. That scared the shit out of me. Dude. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Getting hacked. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, and in the context of this clip, along with Stu. Okay. And I was saying he, how um and then he just and then like, you could listen insane skill and, and he just sees the game so well, right? I'm talking like, about Brax right now. A tier one caliber. He's already ready to become I'm talking about Brax right now. again, along with Stu. Okay? And if Cloud9 and Liquid and their current rosters don't do well, why wouldn't they just pick up Brax? Why wouldn't they offer him a contract and offer him a deal? And even though Brax wants to play with me in AZK, 
Honestly, I would make him do it. I'd be like, no, bro, like, you're going to join them. What do you mean? Like, you need to be on, like, a tier one world stage, you know, playing with the best teammates possible. Although I think me and AZK will probably be absolute, like, top 10 NA players without a doubt. I would okay and i still maintain that i still think if i put in the time after like eight months or whatever i would be a top 10 player and i think azk would as well i still maintain that you can call me crazy you could talk shit. like i said before i mean i have confidence in my own abilities and confidence in myself that i if i really put in that motivation and that drive and have that drive and put in that time that that's what i would become that's me take it or leave it like if you don't have confidence in yourself and you think that's a ridiculous thing to say then whatever but i have confidence in myself and i still believe that um and yeah and in this vlog i'm talking about exactly what i set up here how we had these offers but i felt like i needed to prove myself i don't think i did anything wrong by saying that i think if we had equivalent talent in eight months we would compete like a top five team i don't think i'm saying anything wrong by telling the truth that we've had orgs you know offer us spots and then that we turned it down for the reasons i stated earlier in this vlog and i documented all of that on my youtube i don't think i did anything wrong with that realizes they'll have to go straight into premier league obviously i didn't have to i could have taken a pro league spot and yes i this is one of the reasons why i didn't take the pro league spot is because we were getting owned on train and i didn't know how to react to certain strats that were coming our way from teams um, and you saw that like like in a lot of our matches when people would full execute on sites We usually didn't hold it because we just didn't really know how to react to it We didn't have the practice down and we didn't have the fundamentals down to you know, really compete with that level of counter-strike um, Yeah, we lost the torque in double overtime. That's absolutely true um, Talk shit about his teammates while going 8 and 18 and tweeting that he sucks now That's true. I we lost and I guess I talk shit about my teammates. I don't know. Um, not really. But if you say so. I mean, anybody that brings out any frustration on stream being like, what the fuck are we doing? Just talking shit about our teammates. I don't know why it is. Um, I think during that match, uh, they were going A and B, B mainly on Mirage on executes. And Dapper wanted to push middle. But they were doing their executes earlier in the round. So I was like, why would we push middle in that scenario? Why don't we just have the cat player play the sites more? And even the A player, you can play the sites more because there's never more than like one middle, right? So I just felt that was like the wrong way to play. But anyways, rage quits from competitive CS. I mean, I guess that's pretty much true. Makes excuses in vlogs. Not really making excuses. I mean, kind of. I'm just saying that I didn't want to play. I don't know how that's really an excuse. I'm just saying like, I don't want to play anymore. I don't have the drive and the motivation. I mean, I guess that's an excuse. It's just like the truth, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, saying that Brax just asked him to play and plays it off like he was never into it. Um, but I see, this is the thing. I was into it at the start. I documented that. And then I talked about how my interest was kind of fading and how I was feeling. So I don't think, I don't know. I, I, I really don't think I did anything super shitty. I was just updating people through vlogs and my fans. Um, I don't think I was talking such a big game or anything because you know i ended up adjusting it to being like i don't know i feel like we have to prove ourselves i'm not sure how my motivation would be um but anyways that's my you know response to everything thank you guys for watching the vlog i hope you guys sat through it and i hope i spoke eloquently and in a way where you could understand you know my point of view um but yeah thank you guys for for watching and peace out